Hey guys, Larry the Tractor Guy here. Man, it is, uh, the wind is blowing. It's like 98 degrees out here in Southwest Oklahoma today. And uh, we're in a high fire danger. And uh, man, we're sure hoping to get some rain out here pretty quick. But uh, hey, I've got a guy that, a customer that has a W235 and he's called in and has a complaint of auto track and steering issues and they're trying to cut some alfalfa hay and they like to use straight track when they're cutting some of their alfalfa fields and uh, so his auto track is not working he's reporting that when he engages his auto track that it just moves back and forth from left to right so aggressively that they can't even use auto track so I've seen this problem a few times with sensors and calibrations and linkage problems and so we're going to run out and take a quick look at that and see if we can help him out and get him going. Okay guys, so we're out here in a pasture uh, by this customer's barn and we set up an auto track line and we're just kind of driving around this pasture and you can see how violently the machine is driving when we're trying to use auto track. So we we have got a serious problem here. And so we're gonna try to run a calibration here in a few minutes and uh, and see if we can see if we can help it and kind of get an idea of what's going on here. I'm gonna hit the resume switch there one more time. And we're kind of locked on the line there pretty good. And you kind of see what's happening here. The machine is just going from left to right about as fast as you can you can see there it's really really and then it'll finally get so bad that that the auto track will just disengage and uh, there it went it just disengaged and so we can't even use auto track so we verified his problem we're going to run back up here and see if we can run some calibrations on the rear steer okay and uh, we may even uh, recalibrate the auto track valve. We're going to go ahead and run a rear steer calibration at ad address um, XSC address 30 talks about the rear steer calibration. We're going to go ahead and select rear steer cal. Okay, we're in rear steer cal now and we must have the rear wheels on the machine pointed rearward pointed back just about as straight as we can get them and we do and we warm her all up as service advisor has advised us to do. We're gonna go ahead and select enter, okay? And so now it says right cow one. And so all we have to do really is kind of sit here and wait for it to run through the rear steer calibration. And I'm kind of looking back through my rear view mirror there and I do not see the rear wheels moving at all, okay? So we'll wait for a few minutes here. During calibration, um, it finally timed out because it never seen the rear wheels on the machine move. So uh, basically what it's given us here is an E-PRSR1, okay? And so that is gonna be a fault code, okay? And so doing a little bit of research on that fault code. So we're gonna get out of calibrations. We're gonna go to XMC controller and we're going to look at address number 99 okay and so that should be voltage for our pressure sensor on the rear steer valve and so what we're looking at there is to see if that voltage changes so sitting still okay in the machine with the machine at high idle okay even at low idle um, we should see pressure there when we make a right or left turn. So we pull the hydro handle out into the neutral zone here, okay? And so we hold the, the hydro handle in the neutral zone and turn the steering wheel to the right, okay? And then to the left, and we should see that 0.51 change voltage in other words it should increase and it never increases but what that's telling me is is that i'm not seeing any voltage change in the pressure sensor on the rear steer valve okay so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and pull that 
sensor out of that rear steer valve and I'll show that to you in a few minutes. And we're gonna go ahead and plumb in a thousand PSI gauge, okay? And then we're gonna run the same test in XMC address 99 and uh, see if we see any pressure, okay? Um, and really, we really don't even have to go into that address. Um, we basically just need to plumb in the gauge and put our hydro handle in the neutral zone and then steer the machine from right to left and uh, see if we increase pressure on the gauge or and if or we even have pressure on the gauge at the rear steer valve. Okay, if we do not have pressure there on the sensor port of the rear steer valve, okay, then more than likely we've got a problem with the valve being stuck, okay? And uh, so we're gonna take a look at that. I'll show you where we plumb that gauge in in just a few moments. So I've opened the side panel up on the left-hand side of the machine, just outside of the cab door here where we can look at the valves, okay? And both valves, okay, you got your auto track steering valve and then we have our rear steer valve. So uh, it really, it kind of takes both of these valves working with each other to get a good auto track on the machine okay and so what we're looking at on this rear steer valve is we're going to remove this sensor right here okay and that's where we will plumb our gauge in to read pressure on that rear steer valve so i'm going to get a gauge and a hose we'll plumb that up and we'll take a look at that pressure i wanted to show you this new tool that i've got here okay we're going to try this out it looks like a multimeter but basically we can use this to test pressure with and if you look at the dial there, we've got several different zones as far as checking pressures and or we can also check it in bar, okay? And then um, I've got a couple of sensors here. So I've got a 5,000 PSI sensor and then I've also got a 500 PSI sensor. So we're gonna, we're gonna plumb in this 5,000 PSI sensor and I've got a long cable here that we can run into the cab while we're doing our test. Okay, and then of course I've got the, the handheld device here that looks much like a multimeter that'll be our gauge, okay? And we'll set that dial over there to probably right there at that 5,000 PSI. And uh, then we'll, uh, we'll run the same test and take a quick look at our pressure and see if we have any pressure on this rear steer valve. So I'm looking at my rear steer valve here again, and this is the sensor. Okay, that we're going to remove and we're going to install this diagnostic DR here so that we can plug in our pressure sensor to test this pressure. Okay, so one of the things that I found also wanted to make mention of is that if we do have pressure at the rear steer valve, okay, then our sensor could be the issue and or wiring to the sensor. I have seen that a few times and so this is kind of a quick way to verify our pressure sensor and then also verify our pressure at the same time. So we're gonna, we're gonna take this sensor out and install our diagnostic receptacle, okay? And I also like to make mention too that when you are removing these sensors or working on any of these valves in the machine, um, we also, it's a good idea to go ahead and relieve our uh, platform pressure and uh, lock our platform um, so that we don't have a lot of pressure around our valves and that kind of thing when we're taking lines loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll carry on with installing our diagnostic receptacle in the rear steer valve and checking this pressure. I've got our sensor installed on the, our pressure sensor installed on the rear steer valve. And I'm gonna try to get this gauge where you can kind of see it there pretty good so as you can see the pressure is at zero okay and so real quick we're going to pull our hydro handle out into the neutral zone here of the armrest okay and then we are going to steer the machine to the right okay we should be seeing pressure okay and then we're going to steer to the left Okay, and as you can see, our pressure is staying on zero. I'm reading this in Service Advisor, and it says that if we did not see pressure at the rear steer valve, then disconnect our gauge or sensor in our case, since we're using the electronic gauge, 
and uh, then install reinstall our sensor and then install our gauge into the RSP port of the main hydraulic block okay so I'm gonna show you where that's at and we're gonna hook this up and we'll check our pressure there at the main hydraulic block I had to kind of rig up a hose here as you can see with another sensor because it's a much larger port on the hydraulic valve to check that RSP pressure okay and so we're gonna install this gauge we'll take a look at that pressure we hooked a gauge into the RSP port as advised in service advisor and as you can see now we have 228 27 28 psi at startup okay so we've got our hydro handle in the neutral zone we're reading right at 225 psi okay so we're going to make a turn to the right turn to the left and as you can see we're still holding that 225 psi okay and so it looks like our pressure is is within spec according to service advisor so i think the next step that we're going to do is go ahead and proceed on with replacing the rear steer valve we've got our rear steer valve removed as you can see it's removed from the panel there um, doesn't take too long uh, flat face plug come in pretty handy when you're out in the field and don't forget to drink plenty of water when you're out in the field okay man it's like 98 degrees out here today in southwest oklahoma and it is super super hot we're really not used to that right now i'm going to show you the old valve here okay so Here's my old valve, here's my new valve. So real quick, we're just gonna swap out all of these fittings, install the new valve, um, and we'll check and see if we have pressure at the sensor port here after installation, which is right there, okay? And uh, then we'll proceed on with calibrating this rear steer on this machine and see if we can get this customer ready to cut hay. We replaced our steering valve, our rear steer valve. Okay, and so I'm gonna turn this real quick and as you can see, we've got pressure now on both sides of the valve when we steer the machine. Okay, so I believe we fixed our problem with the rear steer valve. I'm just basically steering from left to right here in front of the barn so we can see the pressure and uh, so it looks like the pressure is good and uh, so we're going to go ahead and run over to the field and run a quick calibration on the rear steer and i'll show you how that works when we get to the field we're going to go ahead and run a rear steer calibration and that's going to be found at address 30. we'll hit that go ahead and hit enter okay it's going to immediately go right into the right cow one Okay, so basically the right proportional valve in the rear steer valve is doing a calibration. It's basically pulsing voltage out to that solenoid until it detects movement of the rear wheel. Okay, now we're doing the left side. Okay, and now it's going to do it a second time on the right valve and then also a second time on the left valve. Okay, and if all goes good, we should see success at the end of the cow. Okay, there's our left two. Success. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and accept that. Okay, now we have calibrated the rear steer. We're gonna go ahead and close our diagnostics. We're gonna take a quick test run, see how it drives down the road real quick. Okay guys, looks like the auto track is doing a really, really good job of auto tracking. We're staying within one to two inches on the display and, and we're running about, uh, about 14 mile an hour and we're pretty well staying on zero to one inch is pretty good. So we're gonna call it good and return this machine back to the hay field. Quick recap on the W235 that had really poor auto steer in the field that was the customer's original complaint that he could not absolutely could not use auto track because the machine would just steer left to right almost violently and then disengage most of the time so 
we went out looked at the machine didn't see any auto steer codes per se um, but the machine I noticed was really hard to drive down the road to and I didn't want to steer very straight driving down the road and then also in the field we verified the customer's complaint of the auto track so we tried to calibrate the rear steer on the machine because these machines do have rear steering as well as hydrostat drive on the front that steers the machine and so during calibrating the rear steer on the machine um, we generated a code and that code led us to check the pressure at the rear steer control valve and so we found zero pressure uh, during that test on the rear steer valve but we did however find that we had pressure on the main hydraulic block going to the rear steer valve so in service advisor uh, we were advised to go ahead and replace the rear steer valve we replaced the rear steer valve verified our pressure and then calibrated the rear steer a few times and heated the oil up and calibrated it a couple more times and then ran the machine in the field uh, using auto track and the machine operated really really well so we're going to return the machine back to the customer and uh, let him go cut alfalfa so i hope this video helps you uh, thanks for watching i uh, appreciate you watching the videos and um, we'll see what we can get into uh, again so thanks for watching larry the tractor guy signing out